how can we use the living culture as an approach to expose the colonial actions that have continued to cause sufferings within our community. We are, we are talking about reclaiming our Africanism, reclaiming our heritage, reclaiming ourselves. And if possible, I would wish to see, or at least to start a motion of bringing back and establish living culture centers, not museums, in our area, with the same quality that can control, they can manage, we can keep our things. We can keep our things for the children, for the generation to come, be able to see that our fathers, our parents have fought. These things were in the museums, in the prisons. They were prisons for 200 years, and they were brought back by our parents. What a story would be. As much as we want to repatriate, we would also like to, to the whole world to understand the damage that has been inflicted on us as indigenous community and the burden we've been carrying, not only by losing land, but also by confusing our traditional, our traditional systems. I think it is time to say we need to strengthen our traditional systems. Our spiritual system, our traditional leadership, our traditional knowledge, our social organization and political organization within our communities has to be strengthened because that's the only way we can fight back. We've been lied to all these years and I think this will allow us to, to engage with the, with the world that has been hidden in museums so to get that important history so that our children have more than we had. We don't want lies. We want the end of these lies. Let the English children grow up with the right history. Let Maasai children or African children or other people's children grow up with the right history. Uh, and if those items are the things that will tell us the history, let's share it so that English children and Maasai children know the right history. When we are telling the stories and we are together, at least we, we do get that hope that we are not alone. Someone from, from Garocero, someone from Sengwe, someone from um, um, Kwarapau, they're not alone. They are actually people who are going through the same struggle. And when we hear the stories of success, the, the stories of victory, we always be motivated that even if we are going through such struggles, but we will actually go through and win the struggles. The commonality of struggles we are going through across the board among all indigenous people has come out very clearly. It's more than clear. And for that matter, we are able to understand one another. Because we are going, we have gone, we continue to go through the same struggles. The struggle for protecting our cultural systems. Before, I was thinking that maybe it is only with the Maasai who are the indigenous community feel facing the same uh, difficulties in the struggling of our land, our identity, our language. But I come to discover that all the indigenous communities, we share many, many of the similarities and uh, struggling. If we get a gathering like this, we will come to know each other, that we are brothers and sisters, though apart, and we can join our strength on how to fight our struggles together as indigenous community. When we come in unity as a community and uh, do our things together, nothing is impossible. Among indigenous people, there's a lot of similarities that the Maasai people in Tanzania and so many other indigenous people, communities in Kenya and South Africa, present here, are going through. Without this strategy, every group suffers on its own, in its own land. But when we are able to come together under a regional body and exchange ideas, strategies, success stories, it really helps us to go on with the struggle and most likely it will enable us to win some of the struggles. I see Palka as a movement of indigenous communities, as a movement that is going to fire up people, especially young generation, to take up the task and ensure that 
they protect what their fathers, their ancestors have protected. The fire that we have been talking about is the one, we are the one who have to take that fire forward because we are the young people. So your wisdom and your words has encouraged us to move forward. And that's why this gathering is really important. And I'm saying that again to bring young people in the group so that they can actually carry the fire. There is much work to be done with young people in terms of building the capacity, raising the awareness. For me, having listened to all the stories, to all that was shared, I think um, our greatest uh, capability is on investing on the young people uh, in our communities. It's also very important that women need to participate uh, in protecting their resources, not only the men. And also women need more space to speak up their voices, like attending maybe local, national and international conference in order to better understand what is being said and also to be, for their voices to be included. I've been impacted with the new energy. Where, when I go back home, I will, uh, I will, I will put the fire, and the the fire which I will put is for the the, the coming generation. It is something which is very powerful. It is something which binds people together. It is something which is alive, and it is something which is not controversial. Palka believes. Indigenous people can be better described uh, through the living culture concept and by making people understand that the living culture concept enables people to understand the wisdom, the traditional wisdom systems which is embedded in the, in the, in the indigenous people systems which is at, at peace with nature. And it is a, a system of wisdom which should inspire the North and the West because we are now going through a crisis in our planet because of uh, the loss of tra traditional wisdoms from the Western society through the modernization processes and globalization. And now we can uh, very confidently say they can actually scoop wisdom from the indigenous systems because we have maintained our indigenous wisdom systems, indigenous knowledge systems. And we are ready to share. We have uh, adopted the participatory video as a technology of sharing with the rest of the world about, about us, about the indigenous people's world, about who are the indigenous people, what are they doing, what are the issues obtaining uh, affecting the indigenous people so that the rest of the world can be re easily reached and they can also understand us. What do we mean by living culture? As a matter of fact, we decided to use the word living as contrasted with cultures which are extinct, which are dead. The cultural system is a system which binds people together. Even if you are educated, you are inevitably bound by your cultural system to behave in a certain way. One, resilience. We have gone through 500 years of modernization and uh, Western development. And globalization is slowly knocking on everybody's door. But the indigenous peoples, the Maasai and the others indigenous peoples, are still practicing their cultural systems, their traditional cultural system, their age-old cultural systems which date back thousands of years. Two, harmony with nature. A living culture uh, understands and appreciates the relationship obtaining between humans and nature. A living culture understands that without nature, we are dead. We are in harmony with the nature and everything that is in the, in the, in the natural world. And uh, we show this by the way we live our life. Uh, two, three, we have the learning and teaching system within the cultural system. 
uh, the learning and teaching system ensures what we call the perpetuity, perpetuation of the cultural system. Without this learning system, the cultural values will easily dissipate uh, because then the young generation will not be able to understand. A certain age set of elders are assigned the job of mentoring a certain age set throughout it is life in the entirety. Uh, this is the system and this is what makes their culture alive. This is what perpetuates their cultural system.